Hi, Sagittarius. Welcome to On the Journey 111. I'm Elle Rock, your hostess. And we are here to do your timeless intuitive energy reading for the next two weeks for the sun, moon, and rising sign of Sagittarius. So welcome, Sag. Um, yes, you did hear correctly. If you are a return subscriber, thank you so much, and or a new subscriber. Um, I was doing weekly read readings, and I don't currently have the bandwidth um, outside of in my personal life right now to continue doing weeklies. So we are moving to bi-weekly, and hopefully what that will do is that will allow me to put up other types of content in that middle week. So just kind of a heads up that there is a slight switch in um, how readings are being posted. And um, I did mention my subscribers, so thank you to my new and returning subscribers. And for those of you popping by the channel to check it out, thanks for being here, you guys. Your likes, shares, subscribes, and comments all help on the Journey 111 gain visibility on YouTube. So thanks for being a part of it. So without further ado, uh, let's check out your general energy reading for the week ahead for Sagittarius. So as always, Sag, this is a general reading, so if the energy that I pull today isn't resonating with you for the next couple weeks, you might try your moon and rising sign because there could be something there for you. And your other placements as well. You just never know when you're vibing with another sign's energy or when you're in their house. So um, first card out, illusion. So embrace the truth. Um, let's take a look at that card. So um, there's been some illusions here, Saggy. Um, there's been a mirror trying to reflect to you and you've had your back to that mirror. You haven't been allowing or seeing the reflection coming through, therefore there's been an illusion created. And um, there's a truth that um, inherently you know within or something that is coming to you, something that's being revealed that maybe you don't know yet. And um, it's, you know, it could potentially, depending on what the illusion is, put you off balance a little bit there, Sagittarius. So let's find out more about what this uh, influential energy is in the week ahead for Sag. Uh, Sag, um, I feel like somebody's asking right now. We are doing the Mystical Wisdom card deck. I have put away the herbiary and bestiary decks just to bring in a little bit of new energy. We'll bring it back eventually, but uh, today we are doing the Mystic Wisdom Oracles and of course Patch Tarot. So uh, more energy please for the week ahead or two week, next two weeks for Sag, please. All right, uh, Epiphany, interesting. I'll pick that up here off the floor in a second. One more for Saggy, Sagittarius. Oh, interesting. This came out for Pisces um, also. So moving forward, an epiphany. So we're going to look at epiphany first. This is seeking clarity. Um, bottom of the deck, we have seven heavenly virtues, the keys to goodness. So um, clarity, so whatever this illusion is that's revealed, um, I feel like I'm seeing the tower card. And whatever this is that is revealed, um, you're going to want to get clarity around it, right? You obviously um, thought something or believed something that wasn't necessarily true, right? We have embraced the truth. So your truth is counter to somebody else's truth, Sagittarius. And um, you might need to seek clarity or greater understanding around that. Um, we have the mask here. Oh, gosh, I feel a sneeze coming on. Oh. Sorry, Sag, I've got a sneeze tickling my nose right now. Okay, it didn't, it didn't want to arrive. <laughs> um, but, you know, the mass to me symbolizes Sagittarius, the same concept as keeping your back to the mirror. Um, the illusion happens when we don't see what's being reflected back to us. And... Um, you know, and masks that I see the mask is on, but it's coming off and it's creating this clarity and this truth that you needed that's kept you um, from being able to move forward. And so for the next couple of weeks, I really get the essence of um, 
So this came out for Pisces, and Pisces was all about the ice cracking open because there was getting ready to be a rush of movement. Um, I get that this is just, do you see how this polar bear is just like, ugh, I'm done. Like he's just stopped, he's rested, he's, you know, he's he's just had it, right? He's, he's ready for a change. And um, he's coming out of illusion, right? He's getting ready to be ready for this positive change that's coming in. He's gaining his strength that he needs for his next movement or his next, his next necessary energetic flow of momentum that's coming in is what I'm hearing. So, wow, that was a mouthful. Um, I, I'm seeing here all of these lights. We've got, um, you know, we have a holiday in the U.S. Um, coming up here pretty soon that's often celebrated with fireworks. So maybe in early July, you're going to start feeling that momentum and that shift. We're in mid-June right now. And of course, all of the readings are timeless. Um, I believe that they find who they're supposed to find exactly when they are found. And, you know, this is here to let you know that that illumination, that clarity, that that light in the dark is happening to be able to get you up and start moving you forward. Right. So we're like, do, 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 right. He's just he's laying down. So be ready for that positive change to come in. Those illusions are being stripped away. You're getting the clarity that you need with your epiphany card here. And um, so it's taking you into a state of forward momentum. And by embodying the seven heavenly virtue, virtues here, the keys to goodness, um, that's going to help, help you just, you've got wishes coming true. So whatever is moving forward and whatever this illusion was that was keeping you from these wishes coming true, when you let that go, you open your hands up and you begin to receive and I'm going to pause this for just a moment because I want to read what the seven heavenly virtues are. So I'm pressing pause. I'll be back. All righty. So with the seven heavenly virtues, we, we're all pretty, pretty, you know, read up on the deadly sins, but let's see what these are. You represent spiritual enlightenment, divine knowledge, and wisdom. Let's look at the card together. You have faith and believe in all that is good and meaningful. You have a deep intuitive understanding of God, the angels, and the universal spirit. You know the keys to goodness. You are being asked to use this knowledge and to empower and teach others. So what the seven heavenly virtues mean? Faith, belief and trust in the right things, hope, Belief that good will prevail. Charity, unlimited loving and kindness towards others. Fortitude, never giving up. Justice, being fair and equitable towards others. Patience, accepting the grace to forgive. And temperance, practicing self-control and moderation. So those are the seven heavenly virtues. I'm going to put this up so that if you want to pause, you can see what those are. Those are the energies here to support you in the week ahead as you, um, and underneath that, we also have facing fears. So release the power of fear, Sagittarius. Um, if you have fear about what this illusion might be or what this mask or the back to the mirror might be, um, you don't really need to worry about that because it's nothing more than a reveal, right? Like what's behind door number one, what's behind door number two, and sometimes we're stoked and sometimes we're not. Whatever it is, it doesn't, you know, it could be a shift in a job. It could be a shift in your financial situation. It could be a, um, a religious belief, a spiritual belief, um, a belief about a relationship or about, you know, maybe, maybe you have somebody on a pedestal and they're falling off the pedestal, you know, who knows, whatever it is, you know, in your, your lifescape, right? The way that these energies bring themselves out. So you have energy, right? Energy. And then you have 
the three-dimensional situation through which that energy manifests itself. So if you're looking at illusion, that could be illusion you had about somebody, about a, situ a relationship situation, um, or something of that nature. And by releasing that, using the seven heavenly virtues, which are, what were they? Faith, faith, hope, charity, fortitude, justice, patience, and temperance. Tapping into that energy helps you move out of the illusions into the truth and moves your energy forward in the week ahead, in the next two weeks, Sag. Sorry, I was doing weekly readings, so that's a hard habit to break. Timeless or weekly. But we're talking about the next two weeks here. Timeless. What more do we have? Tell me more about illusions here. Embracing the truth for Sag. Yep. <clears throat> Has to do with your money, I think. Four of discs, stability. Do you have illusion that you are not stable? Or an illusion that you are? Um, let's find out more, please. Tell me more about the four of discs. There we go. Okay, yeah, you're manifesting manifesting abundance. So you have an illusion here um, about your abundance. Maybe you think that you don't have enough and you actually do. Um, perhaps you are maybe in a state of contraction. Maybe you're being asked to put some money out towards something as an investment in yourself um, because we have the wizard here and the wizard is the power of creation. So, you know, is the, are, do you have the stability? Is that, is that the illusion, right? Um, and I, like, I'm just going to go with what I say, so I'm just the messenger. But was there, did you think that you were stable in something that's really not stable and you're potentially being called out of it um, to create something new, right? So um, let me give you... Um, an example of the illusion of stability here. So uh, in December last year, um, the company that I work for let go of their CEO and CFO. In January, a couple of members of the board of directors took over. And then in February, layoffs started. So that real false sense of security or stability about my job and my pentacles became ungrounded, right? Now with that Sagittarius, um, once I understood that the, you know, the illusion had passed, I wasn't stable. Um, you know, it does require, you know, certain movement and certain commitments and certain efforts that need to be made to maintain it because, you know, I got to keep my job, but not everybody did, right? So the illusion of stability came in and then was replaced by the wizard with the power of creation. As all of these, these jobs and these positions and all of these things shifted within the organization that I work for, I began to see opportunities where I could do new things, right? Because there were now gaps. There were now things that, that needed to have some attention that didn't have any attention and areas of interest, right? And this is a time of, of, you know, deep reckoning. And we have a great awakening happening right now with, you know, the coronavirus and with all of the, you know, racial unrest that's happening in the U.S., things that are being revealed, you know. It's, it's not a secret that there's, that there's been conflict, right? And what we've done is we've witnessed it on a massive level. And what that does is that brings in the power of creation because stability has been rocked. It's not what we thought it was. And what that does is that allows us to move through the illusion of what our next truth becomes, Sagittarius. So whatever the stability is in your life that's being, um, you know, that that you're finding out, you know, may have been a, an illusion or not quite as stable, or you need to put a new level of effort and work into it 
to create on top of it um, or in lieu of it. It's going to depend on your situation. I'm hearing in lieu of it, but you know, it depends on you. So we um, just had um, the five of cups come out, which is sorrow. It's grief. It is these two. Um, if this is a relationship, if this isn't career or job related, um, or and this is family or an intimate relationship, um, you know, the clarity that's coming in or the epiphany that's coming forward is that there's actually been a lot of grief and sorrow and that these cups are empty, right? Um, you know, there's not a single cup. In the normal five of cups, it's it's, you know, there's three in front of them that have spilled and there's two behind with water. This is a complete loss, right? This is this is in the upright position. It's loss. And this is the sorrow of the loss. And with that epiphany, it's it looks like it's coming into, you know, realization of that and having this two of wands moment, this choosing, this genesis, this knowing where you're going towards. It's it's that moment of the illusion. It, that's that's the clarity. That's your epiphany right there happening with your two of wands. Let's get a little bit more on this. I'm going to find out. Tell me more about epiphany and the two of wands. What is this genesis? Okay. Oh, the emperor. Interesting. Structure. Um, organization. If this is job, you could be... Um, this could be about a boss. You could be the manager or the leader of this organization. Um, you could be becoming the leader in, you know, wiping away this illusion. Um, and literally seeing like rose colored glasses being ripped off. Whatever this is, the um, emperor is around bringing in structure, right? It is all four of the kings in the deck. It is the passion of your dreams. It's also intimate passion. Um, with the wands energy, with the pentacles energy, it's being grounded in your abundance. With the king of cups, it's being emotional, like tapped into your emotions, but not overly emotional, right? You can use it to make good decisions. And then we've got the king of swords, who's a clear, concise decision maker and doesn't cut through, like cuts through the crap, right? And this is the balance of that. And that's understanding that you're harnessing all four of those masculine energies um, in, the, in the next couple of weeks, Sagittarius, to work through this loss and to, to um, have this moment of realization of what's important to you because you're going to be moving forward, right? This is, this is the spark that starts the fire that melts the ice, that warms the polar bear up, right? Um, that takes us into action and forward motion towards what's most important to you. And of course, using those seven heavenly virtues to do that, right? So let's find out. Oh. All right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so the king of wands came out in reverse this is that reckless, passionate energy where emotions aren't under control. So when you are moving forward towards this positive change that's coming into you, in for you, once you've pulled off the rose-colored glasses, you've kind of you know ripped the veil or the blindfold from your eyes and you have this forward movement, be mindful not to be reckless with it, right? Because this polar bear has been resting. It's been... It's been in frozen tundra for a while and it just looks tired, right? And when it goes into motion towards its passion, towards its dreams, towards the seed of life that's the creation on the tip of the wand here, right? As it goes towards that energy, it can become ungrounded. So, you know, staying mindful of the um, emotions because, the wa you know, waters the emotions. We've got wands here for fire and um the fire element can turn so the water can put out the fire element right the emotions can put out the fire of your passions that are driving you forward when you get reckless and or spill out and be counterproductive 
So be mindful of that King of Wands energy. Um, if this is um, to do with a relationship, it's, um, you know, being sexually rec reckless. So if you're moving out of a relationship and moving forward into maybe dating or something like that, um, you know, stay grounded in your energy. Stay grounded in whatever virtues most suit you, Sagittarius, right? It's not about other people. It's about your truth and embracing that, right? It's not about turning your back to who you are. It's about facing exactly who you are and being okay with what your truth is because it gets you out of stagnation and moves you into what it is you are becoming. So can I get one more for moving forward, please? There we go. Interesting. So these cards are coming out in reverse. And um, this is get ready for positive change. And these are the antithesis to positive change, Sagittarius. So if you're struggling with embracing the truth and the clarity that you get from this epiphany, from this loss, and from the fact that you've been guided to kind of choose yourself here in this Genesis moment, because we have here the princess of discs in reverse, which is being obstinate and not working towards what it is that's opening for you, this positive change. <coughs> Excuse me. And we also have the three of discs, which in, in the upright position indicates working together and we have here the energy of envy. So, you know, envy is one of the seven deadly sins, right? And um, obstinate, I don't know that that's a deadly sin, but when you're talking about wanting to move forward on your path here, Sagittarius, and get this polar bear out of its hibernation position, like I know that they don't hibernate in the winter, like, or maybe they do, I don't know. Um, but to get it up off the ground, um, I mean, this is a beautiful card. This is, this is movement. This is things taking that next step. But to get that polar bear up off the ground, if you are in low vibrational frequency and you are, you know, embodying the seven deadly sins versus the seven heavenly virtues of faith and, um, you know, hang on, bottom of the deck, we have the hierophant, which is spirituality. I'm going to pull out the seven heavenly virtues again because um, it's the antithesis of what's happening here with your move forward card, Sagittarius. And, um, you know, you if you are holding a position here of envy about somebody else's abundance, if you're making reckless decisions, which a reckless decision might be obstinate about a choice that you that would be in your highest good, but a choice you don't necessarily want to make. Um, all of these are preventers in your moving forward. So, um, you know, be mindful of that. Now, in regards to another interpretation of the um, Princess of Discs here, in terms of obstinate, you may need to be obstinate in standing your ground for what it is you want so you can move forward, okay? But this um, reckless envy energy um, isn't serving you, Pi or not Pisces. So interesting. So you might be dealing with a Pisces um, Sagittarius because Pisces also had the move forward card. So, you know, if you are dealing with a Pisces and you do want to get these in the upright position, tapping into the practical, pra pragmatic nature of the, I'm sorry, this is not the princess. This is the prince of discs. Apologies for that. Tapping into the Prince of Discs energy to be pragmatic about what your next steps are. Because when you go, you're going to go fast, right? You can tap into the upright, upright energy of the King of Wands and be audacious versus reckless. And what that means is you're tapping into those heavenly virtues. You're tapping into this Hierophant energy. You're learning, you're building, you're growing. You know, you're working together with people. You're taking risks. Um, audacious is being a risk taker in a healthy way, um, Sagittarius. I keep wanting to say Pisces. I feel really confident that you might want to go check out the Pisces video um, because, you know, this is, this is really positive in terms of moving forward and um, being mindful of your energy is going to help you usher it in. 
So I'm going to really quickly, again, the seven heavenly virtues, faith, hope, charity, fortitude, justice, patience, temperance, right? We've got audacious here. That's the, uh, you know, reckless is the opposite of patience. Um, taking risks is good. Being reckless, um, it backfires, um, or it can. So, yeah, let's see. How are we doing on time? 25. Let's see if there's anything else that wants to come out. I'm pulling um, the Hierophant off here for the seven heavenly virtues. Um, essentially, in the next two weeks, you're really being guided, sad you to tap into that higher version of yourself, to dip into your spirituality, to spend time um, in your choosing, right choosing, um, right knowing, right seeing, right, you know, right speech. Um, all of those aspects, um, you know, I, I believe those are Buddhist teachings um, in terms of you always get to show up in your highest no matter how other people show up. And sometimes, you know, you need to harness that shadow energy, but that doesn't make you bad for harnessing shadow energy. It just means it might be necessary in a situation and being mindful of when it's healthy for you to harness the energy and when it's unhealthy and reckless, right? So let's see if there's anything else that wants to come out um, to clarify for Sag. Next couple weeks here. You have Hangman. Oh, beautiful. The star, new hope, faith. Surrender. That's awesome. Yes. And then the truth. Speak. So, Sag, you know, there's some truth coming out in the next couple weeks. I don't see a tower here. That's not to say that it that it's not a tower moment. But the star shows up and the star is telling you to have faith. Have faith in what it is that you need to be true to for yourself, right? Um, turn around look at yourself in the mirror and find out what your truth is, Sagittarius, because that's the truth that matters. That's the truth that allows you to work together collaboratively with people, to speak about what your needs are, to be able to surrender and look at things from a different point of view. If you're only looking at something from one point of view, how might you view it upside down in another position? Um, you know, what can you bring to that? Tapping into that faith here with the star um, keeps you connected and um, speaking your truth. You know, it's, it needs to happen here. It, I think it's a lovely reading. It's a beautiful reading because there's a lot of power here. You're creating when you um, understand that there has been a, an illusion around stability and you go and you can create that stability for yourself rather than trying to find it outside of yourself. Um, that creates strength. That creates your ability to tap into your magician and tap into the wizard and go into the power of creation. So that is going to do it. And yeah, that's beautiful because now we've got at the bottom of the deck, the three of cups, abundance. <coughs> Excuse me. Sagittarius, um, in the next couple of weeks, tap into those heavenly virtues. We've talked about them several times here, so hopefully you grabbed them. Know that you are the divine creator of your life. The wizard energy is here because this three of cups is abundance. It's joy. It's happiness. It's emotional happiness. You might be celebrating with friends. Whatever it is, it's, it's getting out of this envy right? This envy energy in reverse of the three of pentacles in reverse, and it's going into the three of cups, that abundance. So a beautiful next couple of weeks, you've got movement coming for you. Um, you are mindful. You are having truths come out. You're receiving information and epiphanies. And um, so it looks, it looks beautiful for you, Sagittarius. So I'm wishing you well in the next couple of weeks. We'll catch up and hopefully I'll see you on uh, whatever content I get to put out on the in-between. Thanks for being here, Sag. See you next time. Bye for now.